the HIPAA rules. Two broad types of regulations are mandated by the legislation. Standards related to easier electronic transmission of healthcare information and stringent procedures intended to ensure the security and privacy of health information. The basic goals of HIPAA are to improve access to health insurance, to reduce fraud, waste, and abuse, and to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare system. Congress's idea was that, in the long run, if administrative tasks were simplified and standardized, the industry would save time and money. You might wonder, where does a healthcare provider start? Individual providers must establish their own systems to comply with HIPAA. The rules don't specify which policies, procedures, or technologies should be implemented or how to carry them out. In order to comply, all covered entities, even single physician practices, must go through the readiness assessment. They must review their own security and privacy needs, recognize where they fall short, and develop a compliance plan. By now, most healthcare providers have geared up with expensive new software in an attempt to stay one step ahead of the law. The most vulnerable area of an individual physician's practice may be his employees. So it's important that he understand HIPAA, educate his staff, and ensure that providers he communicates with also follow the rules. This program is not intended to replace the training you receive or the information your facility distributes, but rather to give you a general understanding of what the HIPAA law requires and the way medical information is handled and disseminated. Your healthcare facility will train and educate you about the specifics of these important laws and their individual compliance systems. Keep in mind as we go through this program that each organization is different and compliance will vary. The teeth of the HIPAA regulations are the administrative simplification provisions, which are broken down into four sections, electronic transactions and code sets, unique identifiers, privacy, and security. The reasoning behind the law is that too much of every healthcare dollar is spent on administrative overhead. The goal of these four sections is to reduce cost. Transactions that are included in the term administrative overhead include enrolling an individual in a health plan, paying health insurance premiums, checking insurance eligibility, authorizations to refer patients to specialists, filing claims for payment for services, requesting or responding to additional information in support of a claim, coordinating the payment of a claim involving two or more insurance companies, and notifying the provider about claim payment. HIPAA requires national uniform standards for these transactions. Before the regulations went into effect, legislators solicited and obtained input from all segments of the healthcare industry to make sure any interested party could voice their opinion and contribute to the law. Because Congress wanted this law to be accepted by the entire healthcare industry, both the public and business had an opportunity to participate in the making of the law. After much debate and significant time for comments, Congress included the administrative simplification provisions in the law. The first section is electronic transactions and code sets. HIPAA requires the entire healthcare industry to fall into step with one another in terms of how health information is transmitted and protected. By October 16, 2003, the former system of individual providers having their own sets of rules will be replaced by a new standardized system for the electronic processing of insurance claims and related transactions. Under the law, providers can still conduct transactions on paper but if they elect to conduct them electronically, they must use the standards agreed upon through the law. After the deadline, covered entities, including health plans, may only conduct compliant transactions. These national standards will allow healthcare providers to submit the same transaction to any health plan in the United States. In general, standard transactions are health claims or equivalent encounter information and attachments, 
payment and remittance advice, claim status inquiry and response, eligibility inquiry and response, referral certification and authorization inquiry and response, enrollment and disenrollment in a health plan, health plan premium payments, coordination of benefits and pending approval, claim attachments, and first report of injury. In addition to providing for standardized electronic transmission of information, the law provided for a system of national code sets. Code sets represent data elements necessary for the processing of healthcare information, such as medical, diagnostic, or procedure codes. In general, code sets cover physician services or other health services, medical supplies, diagnosis codes, inpatient hospital procedures, denial of services, and drugs for retail pharmacy. Because of HIPAA, health systems and providers now have a compelling reason to accurately include what's performed on or treatment administered to patients and to make sure that they are properly billed. In the past, some providers documented vaguely or their entries were unreadable. With the new law, healthcare professionals today, including nurses, have a duty to record, chart, and ultimately bill for services that match the care delivered. Although compliance with HIPAA's new rules is a huge undertaking, lawmakers believe if everyone complies, the industry should save up to $9 billion per year without reducing the amount or quality of healthcare services. The second section of the Administrative Simplification Rules covers standards adopted to provide for unique health identifiers for each individual, employer, health plan, and health care provider. The rules are designed to take into account multiple uses for identifiers, multiple locations, and specialty classifications for health care providers. Perhaps the most important area of the administrative simplification provisions is the new privacy regulations. Doctor-patient confidentiality has always been at the core of the medical profession, and patients traditionally place a sacred trust in their doctor to keep medical confidences. HIPAA enacted legally binding privacy and security rules and provided for stiff penalties for noncompliance. The privacy rules apply to healthcare providers, but also to their business associates, such as consultants, billing companies, accountants, lawyers, accreditation agencies, management companies, business partners, or subcontractors. The rules were designed to balance the need for the free exchange of electronic health information against the potential for abuse of patient privacy and confidentiality. Privacy rules took up the lion's share of the attention in the discussions leading to the HIPAA rules. Concerns ranged from whether the rules would provide enough protection to whether their complexity and cost would prohibit compliance. Nonetheless, since their effective date of April 14, 2003, the HIPAA privacy standards provide the first comprehensive federal protection for the privacy of health information. Although most states have laws to ensure confidentiality of medical information, Congress believed a minimum level of national protection was necessary. The bill supersedes state laws except where the state law is necessary to prevent fraud and abuse, to ensure appropriate state regulation of insurance or health plans, address controlled substances, or for other purposes. Federal privacy regulations do not preempt state laws that impose more stringent requirements. These provisions do not limit a state's ability to require health plan reporting or audits. This privacy rule protects any health information that can be used to identify an individual. Protected health information, or PHI, includes any oral or recorded information, information on any past, present, and future physical or mental health condition, all health care treatment, and past, present, or future payment of health care. The privacy rules encompass the following. They give consumers control of health information, including the ability to review their own medical records, request corrections, and determine who is looking into their records and why. 
They set limits on the use and disclosure of health information without deterring research or undermining care. They provide a balance between privacy protection and public responsibility, allowing access to private records for public uses, including public health, health oversight, research, law enforcement, and investigation of abuse, neglect, and violence. And they establish accountability for violators, which includes both civil and criminal penalties. In order to comply with the privacy rules, the average health care provider and their employees should use and disclose protected health information only as HIPAA permits, adopt written privacy procedures, educate current and future employees about the privacy procedures, and where they are lacking, establish policies and implement procedures to ensure privacy and security. All providers must now give each patient a notice of privacy practices. The regulations require it contain the following header. This information describes how medical information about you may be used and disclosed and how you can get access to the information. Please review it carefully. This privacy notice must be clearly posted in the provider's office and contain information about the patient's rights. Some healthcare professionals have been confused about how best to implement and keep track of whether a patient has been given a privacy notice and where to file them for easy access. One doctor I know had a good idea. He prepared an ink stamp which reads as follows. I have reviewed this office's notices of privacy practices which explains how my medical information will be used and disclosed. I understand that I am entitled to receive a copy of this document. He imprints the stamp on the outside of each patient file. As existing patients come in, they are given the privacy notice and they sign and date the information stamped on the outside of the file. That way, each time a worker pulls a file, it is immediately apparent whether or not the patient has received and reviewed the privacy information. Eventually, all active patients will have a stamp on the outside of their file and the new ones will receive it on their first visit. I hope this suggestion will come in handy. HIPAA requires each patient to sign a patient consent form before uses and disclosures of their health information can be made for treatment, payment, and health care operations. The consent form must contain clear language the average patient can easily understand, refer to the privacy notice and the right to change notice, Advise the patient of their right to request restrictions on use or disclosure of PHI and the covered entity's right to deny that request. State the individual's right to revoke the consent in writing and be signed by the patient. Three exceptions apply here when a provider has an indirect relationship to the patient, such as a radiologist reading test results, if the care was provided to an incarcerated inmate, or if a reasonable attempt was made to obtain consent after emergency treatment. If a patient refuses to sign the consent form, the doctor can refuse treatment. He must explain to the patient why he's refusing treatment. If the patient still refuses to sign, the doctor must send the patient a letter, preferably certified mail, return receipt requested, explaining why treatment was withheld. The physician should then give the patient a list of alternative health care resources and all of these transactions should be clearly documented in the patient's file. An exception to a patient signing a consent form is where there is an emergency situation, if care was provided to an incarcerated inmate, or if the doctor and patient could not communicate and consent is inferred from the patient's conduct. In emergency care situations, it's important to get the consent form signed as soon as possible following the procedure. Each patient must also sign an authorization form. Although similar to the consent form, the major difference between the two forms is that the physician can withhold medical treatment if a person refuses to sign a consent form, but cannot withhold treatment if the patient refuses to sign the authorization form. Never combine both forms into one. Authorization forms cover such things as fundraising activities, marketing activities, or research on the part of the physician or covered entity. An authorization form contains the following information. An easily understandable description of the information to be used or disclosed. A clear identification of the person or class of persons authorized to request use of the disclosed information 
and to whom the information may be disclosed. An expiration date or event. State that the individual has the right to revoke the authorization in writing. State that the information disclosed may be subject to redisclosure by the recipient and no longer be protected. State that the provider cannot condition treatment on the patient signing it. State that the patient may refuse to sign. Describe the purpose of each requested use or disclosure. Must be dated and signed. And if applicable, must state whether the doctor or provider will be paid. There are 13 instances where an authorization form is not required. Disclosures required by law. Victims of abuse, neglect, or domestic violence. Warrants or court orders. Coroners, medical examiners, or funeral directors. Organ, eye, or tissue donations. Workers' compensation compliance. Law enforcement to avert a serious threat to health or safety. For public health purposes and health oversight committees or specialized government functions, directed to those that use appropriate safeguards to protect information, involves internal practices, books and records that will be made available to the Secretary of Health and Human Services to determine compliance, those who make the information available to the patient for inspection, and those who agree to store or return the information at the end of the agreement. A patient now has a right of access to copy and inspect much of their medical information. However, a patient does not have the right to inspect and copy his psychotherapy notes, information compiled in anticipation of or use in a civil, criminal, or administrative action or proceeding, and certain health information maintained by a covered entity that is subject to or exempted from the Clinical Laboratory Improvements Amendments of 1988. Patients can request an accounting of disclosures of medical information. They also have the right to request amendments. A covered entity may deny the request if the information was accurate and complete or was not created by the covered entity. If the amendment is denied, the entity must inform the patients of its options with respect to future disclosures. Patients can also request restrictions on certain uses and disclosures of their medical information and the rules set out strict implementation procedures, policies, notices, and forms. Covered entities are not required to include in the accounting certain disclosures, such as those for national security or intelligence purposes, disclosures to law enforcement officials, or disclosures made prior to the compliance date. The HIPAA regulations limit how freely you may discuss a patient's care with a family member or friend. When it comes to interested family members who seek information about the patient's condition, maintaining confidentiality of the patient's medical record is perhaps one of the most difficult areas of the law for nurses and healthcare professionals. However, in light of the penalties for violation, you need to be cautious. Many seasoned professionals will have to bite their tongue and be prepared to deal with angry family members when they decline to discuss a patient's care without proper permission from the patient. The regulations require that most disclosures be limited to that which is reasonably necessary to accomplish the purpose for the use, request, or disclosure. The last section of the administrative simplification provisions contains the security standards. For HIPAA's privacy regulations to be implemented, security measures had to be adopted, whereas the privacy rules address how and to whom data is disclosed. Security standards deal with how data is stored and accessed. Everyone involved in documenting patient care, from the nurse's station to the file room to the medical record storage facility, must take special care to avoid common mistakes when using computers or computer technology, which directly affects or reveals patient information. Examples are leaving your password taped to or written near your computer, giving your password to a coworker, walking away from your computer without signing off, leaving confidential information in open areas, holding a file so that others can read it, or discussing patient care at the nurse's station, at lunch, in elevators, or with family or friends. 
The security standards were designed to take into account the technical capabilities of record systems used to maintain health information, the cost of security measures, the need for training persons who have access to health information, the value of audit trails and computerized record systems, and the needs and capabilities of small and rural health care providers. The security standards integrate the following components. Administrative procedures that document general practices for establishing and enforcing security policies. Physical safeguards for protecting computer systems and buildings. Technical security services and mechanisms that protect, control, and monitor access to personal health care information and procedures for the transmission and authentication of electronic signatures. The security regulations provide for safeguards which say that each person who maintains or transmits health information shall employ reasonable and appropriate administrative, technical, and physical safeguards to ensure the integrity and confidentiality of the information, protect against any reasonably anticipated threats or hazards to the security or integrity of the information, unauthorized uses or disclosures of the information, and otherwise to ensure compliance. These regulations require communications amongst vendors and providers, and each party must make sure that the entity that they interact with are in compliance. If your organization is HIPAA compliant, they will have reviewed their business operations regarding electronic transactions, will have assigned a HIPAA point person who will monitor HIPAA compliance and ongoing transactions, will have identified their HIPAA partners, the people they do business with, will have made changes to their computer systems and software in order to be compliant, and they may have decided to use a third-party certification service or tool. It's important to understand the compliance regulations because the bill imposes civil money penalties and prison for certain violations. For knowing disclosures, penalties can be up to $50,000 and one year in prison. For information disclosed under false pretenses, penalties range from up to $100,000 and five years in prison. And for information disclosed with intent to sell, transfer, or use for commercial advantage, personal gain, or malicious harm, penalties can be up to $250,000 and 10 years in prison. Compliance with the HIPAA laws will be easy for some providers and a challenge to others. Success depends upon trained and knowledgeable employees. HIPAA is a many-faceted law. We all want affordable access to quality health care. A thorough understanding of the importance of the HIPAA regulations will ensure top-notch patient care and reduce lawsuits. I hope this program has helped you understand the law and how vital your role is to its success. And don't forget, a little legal insight goes a long way. If your organization is HIPAA compliant, they will have reviewed their business operations regarding electronic transactions, will have assigned a HIPAA point person who will monitor HIPAA compliance and ongoing transactions, will have identified their HIPAA partners, the people they do business with, will have made changes to their computer systems and software in order to be compliant, and they may have decided to use a third-party certification service or tool. It's important to understand the compliance regulations because the bill imposes civil money penalties and prison for certain violations. For knowing disclosures, penalties can be up to $50,000 and one year in prison. For information disclosed under false pretenses, penalties range from up to $100,000 and five years in prison. And for information disclosed with intent to sell, transfer, or use for commercial advantage, 
personal gain, or malicious harm, penalties can be up to $250,000 and 10 years in prison. Compliance with the HIPAA laws will be easy for some providers and a challenge to others. Success depends upon trained and knowledgeable employees. HIPAA is a many-faceted law. We all want affordable access to quality health care. A thorough understanding of the importance of the HIPAA regulations will ensure top-notch patient care and reduce lawsuits. I hope this program has helped you understand the law and how vital your role is to its success. And don't forget, a little legal insight goes a long way. In recent years, healthcare costs have risen dramatically. Around 24% of each healthcare dollar goes toward administrative expenses. Part of the growing national problem was that benefit plan providers had their own complex coding systems and didn't share vital diagnostic or billing information. This lack of communication prevented the whole healthcare industry from moving to a single efficient electronic transaction environment. This is perhaps the most compelling reason Congress enacted a People's Act of Healthcare Change when it enacted the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, or HIPAA. Hello, I'm Melanie Bragg. As healthcare personnel responsible for charting, processing, and maintaining medical records, your role is vital to the efficient operation of any healthcare facility. In addition to providing top-notch patient care, your knowledge of and adherence to the regulations in the area of primary medical records can also help reduce the number of lawsuits brought against healthcare professionals and institutions. Many of HIPAA's rules have long been a standard operating procedure for healthcare workers. Providers have always been conscious of the need to protect patient rights and confidentiality. Now, for the first time, Federal law requires mandatory compliance and meticulous adherence to the HIPAA rules. Two broad types of regulations are mandated by the legislation. Standards related to easier electronic transmission of healthcare information and stringent procedures intended to ensure the security and privacy of health information. The basic goals of HIPAA are to improve access to health insurance, to reduce fraud, waste, and abuse, and to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare system. Congress's idea was that, in the long run, if administrative tasks were simplified and standardized, the industry would save time and money. You might wonder, where does a healthcare provider start? Individual providers must establish their own systems to comply with HIPAA. The rules don't specify which policies, procedures, or technologies should be implemented or how to carry them out. In order to comply, all covered entities, even single physician practices, must go through the readiness assessment. They must review their own security and privacy needs, recognize where they fall short, and develop a compliance plan. By now, most healthcare providers have geared up with expensive new software in an attempt to stay one step ahead of the law. The most vulnerable area of an individual physician's practice may be his employees. So it's important that he understand HIPAA, educate his staff, and ensure that providers he communicates with also follow the rules. This program is not intended to replace the training you receive or the information your facility distributes, but rather to give you a general understanding of what the HIPAA law requires and the way medical information is handled and disseminated. Your healthcare facility will train and educate you about the specifics of these important laws and their individual compliance systems. Keep in mind as we go through this program that each organization is different and compliance will vary.
The teeth of the HIPAA regulations are the administrative simplification provisions, which are broken down into four sections. Electronic transactions and code sets, unique identifiers, privacy, and security. The reasoning behind the law is that too much of every healthcare dollar is spent on administrative overhead. The goal of these four sections is to reduce cost. Transactions that are included in the term administrative overhead include enrolling an individual in a health plan, paying health insurance premiums, checking insurance eligibility, authorizations to refer patients to specialists, filing claims for payment for services, requesting or responding to additional information in support of a claim, coordinating the payment of a claim involving two or more insurance companies, and notifying the provider about claim payment. HIPAA requires national uniform standards for these transactions. Before the regulations went into effect, legislators solicited and obtained input from all segments of the healthcare industry to make sure any interested party could voice their opinion and contribute to the law. Because Congress wanted this law to be accepted by the entire healthcare industry, both the public and business had an opportunity to participate in the making of the law. After much debate and significant time for comments, Congress included the administrative simplification provisions in the law.